I used to think that if you treated your plants royally and you added lots of fertiliser and watered them thoroughly, then you'd get lots of flowers. But I've just discovered through bitter experience that that could be the very worst thing to do in some situations. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. And in order to get to the bottom of what stops your garden plants from flowering, I've asked local flower farmer Sue Oriel to go through the five top reasons why our plants are not bursting into glorious flower. Sue and her business partner Stephanie grow all their own flowers for their country lane flowers business in their own gardens and they do flowers for weddings and local bouquets and so really it would be a disaster if Sue's or Stephanie's flowers were not flowering. So Sue, what do you think is the number one reason for our garden plants not flowering? I would say for your garden plants that the number one reason why they don't flower is you've put them in the wrong place in the first place. So for instance, a shade loving plant is happy in the shade, a sun loving plant planted in the shade is highly unlikely to produce very many flowers or any flowers of any kind of particular size. A plant like a foxglove will flower very happily in the shade, whereas a plant that needs full sun, like a dahlia or a cosmos or many, many other kinds of plants, if you put them in the shade, what you'll get is an elongated plant with reduced flower size and sometimes no flowers at all. I think another factor is the age of the plant, isn't it? Because I've just revamped my border and I planted some quite sort of little plants, you know, nine centimetre plants, both in the autumn and in the spring. And they are flowering, but they haven't grown to their full size. And I am hoping that I'm going to have a much more floriferous border next year when they've properly grown out. What do you think about that? I think you're absolutely right. As long as your plants are in the right place and they've got the conditions that they're after, I think you just need to be a bit patient, Alexandra, with these things. In terms of old plants, though, I think they do diminish uh, when they get older, but there are things you can do about them, like for the classic split a herbaceous perennial into smaller bits when it gets really congested in the middle, that can really help it along. I mean, I had some Iris Sibiricum, which had done that classic thing of growing out of the middle and had produced a circle. And all I did was I dug it all out. I had to get a pickaxe virtually to separate them because they were so congested. And now I've got four lovely plants. I did exactly the same with overly congested, very old Agapanthus. And I understood that they like to be root compressed. Well, they do up to a point. And once that they're actually looking like a, a really, really crowded pot, again, I had to use a saw to separate them. The roots were so combined. I've got three fabulous plants now. So an older plant can be rejuvenated with a little bit of muscle um, to split it into other plants. Some plants just die. They get old, they die. It happens to all of us. Oh, a gardener friend once told me that you should aim to replace about 10% of your herbaceous plants every single year. That's how many will just go over. I think the next thing that really is a big factor in not getting enough flowers is when we don't deadhead enough. And I first came across this when I interviewed Frances Moskowitz mm. about her amazing herbaceous border and she said that she deadheaded about four times a day and I can tell you I had some very astonished comments about that. But I think what she was really saying is she just takes her snips out. If she goes out with a cup of tea, if she mm. goes out to stroll or to get a little breath of fresh air or something, she takes her snips out. And if she sees a flower going over, she just snips it off. And yeah. I think it's interesting, I think the RHS recently has been emphasising that you don't need to wait for the flower to be completely dead. No. That actually it's a good idea to deadhead when they start to look a bit scruffy. Because I always think, oh, there's still a bit of colour, oh, um, I don't know, I don't want to. But actually I think ruthless works doesn't it when it comes to deadheading it absolutely does so my rule of thumb would be if i don't think i would sell that flower because the quality isn't high enough then snip off it goes which does mean that i will cut things back even if they're just vaguely damaged one little petal has gone or something because you know it's a business and we can't let people down so i would deadhead probably three times a week a flower farmer when they're going around and picking blooms are effectively deadheading ahead of needing to deadhead. You always cut down as well. We want a long stem, we cut right down to the leaf node and that is, uh, promotes more flowers than just taking the flower off the top of the stem. 
plants. I interview quite a lot of expert plant specialists, mm. like hydrangea specialists yeah. or dahlia specialists on the middle sized garden. And when I interviewed signature hydrangeas and talked to Roger Butler, and I said, what's the main reason why hydrangeas aren't mm. flowering? And he said, pruned at the wrong time. Yeah, another classic would be the Philadelphus. You see, as soon as those white flowers are over, leap in with your snips, your shears or whatever, and take it back down at that point. Because if you don't let new wood develop this year, you won't get any flowers the following year. And there are lots of shrubs that that work. So anything that has an early flowering, as soon as it's finished, in you go, chop it all off, and then it's got a chance to recover, ready for next spring. And I think this is also a question with roses, because when I was interviewing Neil Miller at Heaver Castle, where they have this fabulous rose garden, yeah. and I said, well, what's the main reason why roses don't flower? And Neil said, it's because people prune them too late, because actually roses, most of them flower on this year's wood. Yeah. So if they start sending shoots up, and then you come along in, say, April, and start pruning them back, well, that's this year's flowers gone. No, absolutely. It's quite interesting, because I think that uh, thinking about roses has slightly changed, because in my grandfather's day, I mean, he used to prune his roses in November. And nowadays, I think most of us do it January, February, um, but certainly not as late as April for the reasons you mentioned. And of course, the other big thing that Neil said was a real problem with roses is that people don't fertilise them enough. Yeah. And I'm not a big user of fertiliser, but when I discovered that roses needed fertilising, it's completely transformed my roses. Yeah. They really need it. Yeah. However, not every flower does, because of course we've had this problem I think you've had it and I've had it, where we've put fertiliser on something like Cosmos and all we've got is a lot of green growth and no flowers. Yeah. So what is the situation where actually too much fertiliser and too much watering and generally making its life too lovely and cosy and easy <laughs> creates no flowers? Well, a classic would be the uh, what people call geranium, but you, we might call a pelagonium, the sort of thing you buy for your summer baskets. Um, put them in pots, keep watering them, keep feeding them every time you water them, and they're just going to sit there going, this is lovely, look at me with my beautiful green leaves, I'm so happy. And then the flowering is a response to a degree of stress because the plant's thinking, I need to reproduce myself. And when it's thinking it's completely comfortable, it won't think like that. I mean, there are ways around some of these. Uh, for instance, a cosmos, if you buy it as a plug plant or you grow it from seed yourself, leave it in the cell until it's decided it's having too much stress by being root bound and it will pop out a bud. Um, and don't plant them out till it's got a bud. Um, it also happens with a wisteria. If you haven't seen it flowering in the shop, you might plant it somewhere and then it won't flower. So you really need to know it's got the habit of flowering as well. So that takes us on to planting seeds at the wrong time. For perennial seeds, because you've got plenty of time for it to come right and you can winter them in a greenhouse, for instance, it isn't such a critical point. But for annual seeds, and most annuals will take two or three weeks to germinate and 90 to 110 days to flower. It's only a simple question of maths and a calendar to realise that if you sow the seeds in June, you're not going to get any flowers that year because the days will be too short and it'll be too chilly for them to get going. If you're sowing them the same year you want them to flower, then do it around about March. If you want some expert advice on certain plants like roses, irises and dahlias, then our expert tips on growing plants playlist at the end of this video is a must watch. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.